We have a colleague, uh, Kojo Akoto Boateng, uh, who is a specialist in some of these uh, areas yes. of conversation. And uh, he's going to help us to you know, break it down. Some places are flooding. Others that used to flood are not flooding as well. So what's going on here? Kojo, good morning. Welcome, Kojo. Good morning, Koku and Kokui. Yes. You said that very well. Yes. <laughs> no, but welcome. Koku? Welcome. Yeah. How are you? Good to see you. I'm good. <laughs> okay. So we saw what the residents of the area are saying. Mm. Many of them are putting the blame on the residents themselves, saying that they're throwing trash into the gutters. The assemblyman doesn't come around or doesn't even stay there to see what's happening and to help desilt these gutters. Kojo, looking at the, the lay of the land there and all that we've heard from the residents there, talk to us, give us your perspective on what could be causing this kind of flooding. Well, they said 2014, mm. it rained heavily and nothing happened. Yes. yes. But between then and now, a lot of development has happened. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of new houses have come up. A lot of um, encroachment has happened. A lot of activity has been happening in the space. Yes. And you see, the more we clear the land and build, the more we increase collection of water into drains and reduce percolation mm -hmm. into the soil. Mm -hmm. Because if there is vegetation and it rains, it's the likelihood of more water so going so. down into mm -hmm. the underground water collection, it's high. But um, if you look at Accra in general, Accra has been expanding at a very rapid rate with very little planning going with the expansion. So the expansion is way ahead of the planning. So we are always having to catch up with putting mitigation factors in place, with solving this and that. I think that's what is happening in Ofanko. Mm -hmm. And when I was watching the video as well, one thing that we noticed was the water bottles and the sachets, yeah. right? A lot of that makes up the bulk of the waste. And I've always said that if, for example, Ghana Water Company and Community Water and Sanitation Agency, they are able to process water to get to all homes and offices, people could drink this water mm. and not have to rely a lot on the sachet mm. water and the uh, produced um, the bottled water yeah. because the unavailability of potable water we can trust to drink mm -hmm. right yeah. is, is is what has made us rely more on sachet water mm. and bottled water for example if you go to the uk affinity water mm -hmm. their water quality dropped slightly like it was negligible <laughs> right because there was a, a, a burst in one of their pipes and they believe that some, some, Could be some contaminated. something, some contamination. The CEO of Affinity Water wrote a letter to all stakeholders and customers to apologize to them, to then promise that as they've said that their water quality levels will be higher than that of Singapore because globally, hmm. we see the, 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 the water from Singapore piped yeah, into the their genius. houses. She apologized. Then they refunded money to the customers. Um, customers and then they were able to pay a fine wow. but here um water access to homes communities is very low that's why we've gone for the um, world bank project gamma water and sanitation project that's why we are doing so i think that largely if you're thinking about solving even problems like flooding mm -hmm. we need to think about solving problems of getting potable water to drink mm. it will reduce the plastics in the system and then that reduces the amount of plastic that finds its way into drains, clogging drains. Mm -hmm. Then we need to look at housing in its entirety. Yes. Residential, commercial, industrial housing. If you look at the rates of growth of the city, everybody is moving away. And the more we move away, the more we are encroaching on waterways, we are encroaching on wetlands, areas reserved for water extension have all been encroached upon. If you go to the lakeside area, Trasaco Valley, all those areas are in dangerous areas. Hmm. Not just that. Go to the Blekuma areas and go to other areas. Yeah. So there is no control, no development control. We need to be looking at that as well. Should we allow Accra, Kumasi, Takrade, Cape Coast, Koforidia, and all these towns and cities expand laterally without any action? Or should we start considering densifying our cities? such that in Adabraka, look all around us. Mm. All these two, three-story buildings. Could you do, say, 10 stories? Mm. For example, if you are building the new Ministry of Gender um, office, can we say we are building a mixed-use structure which will have offices, first floor, second floor, third floor, fourth floor, then fifth, sixth, seventh, eight, nine would be accommodation. Mm -hmm. 
so that people don't have to go to EB and come to work in Accra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if, if everything is concentrated, extending roads and water and electricity wouldn't be a big deal because we are all here. Yeah. So we are all using the same roads. Mm -hmm. Then the funds we would have used to do that will be used to enrich our lives and also invest in other areas. I think that's also one thing you need to think about. Right. Densifying the city and reducing the sprawl. And this will take a lot of effort by the state and private sector. Mm. Our housing policy and our housing um, um, delivery has largely failed. That's why we're having these challenges. It's, housing is also important because in any well-organized housing structure, there's a well-organized waste and sanitation structure. Mm. To go in tandem with it. Yes. Mm. You will not have a well-organized planned housing scheme without a well-organized waste sanitation exactly. um, um, scheme that comes with it. And because of the way we are developing, it's also becoming more and more difficult for companies to pick waste. It's becoming more difficult for us to manage waste. So I think those are things you need to think about. Mm. Whilst we're also thinking about the attitudes. There is the planning, there is the engineering. There are the things that we always overlook. So yeah. when we are talking flooding, nobody thinks that even the water we drink, we drink is related. It's related. Mm. So we but need to... How, how is it that it almost seems like we're developing backwards in other jurisdictions they'll make sure roads power connection water connection are all in place before the buildings are even put up and completed why do we do it the other way around you have estates springing up all over the place mm -hmm. with no running water mm -hmm. with no proper <coughs> roads done with no even proper power supply why is that development allowed to take place if we don't have those amenities in place because we largely failed. Uh, there, there was an Accra Town Plan of 1948. <laughs> we reviewed it in 1956. <clears throat> We've had reviews on and on and on and on. The plans were great. The execution was poor. So, so essentially, <clears throat> Accra is, is, is a planless <laughs> metropo metropolitan area with a lot of vulnerabilities. Mm. Yeah. The other thing I want to also mention, mention is that the more people move into the city the more we lose the chance to plan it properly and if we even want to fix a craft flats we need to fix the economy of savelugu we need to fix mm. the e e e e economy mm. of bole mm -hmm. yeah we need to fix the economy of freedom new drubble because yeah. rural ever migration so is that yeah. my family members in Inkranza would not want to come live in accra yeah if the people are moving to accra and there are not enough houses where do they live mm. They, 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 they fill spaces that are available. And these spaces, usually, when you look at it, as are spaces that also have to help us prevent some of these things. So that would blow thing. Old Fadama. People have moved into the city. They cannot go and live at um, um, Ridge, Cantonment, mm -hmm. mm. Trasaco, mm. any of these plush estates. So they'll build stuff there, encroach on the waterway, and then things will happen. So fixing the problems of Accra require us to fix the problems, problems of, of, everywhere the, else. of everywhere else mm. because if we are not creating economies and investing in those places for the people to have a better life there they'll all move here now the, the more people moving the more pressure we put on the city and the infrastructure and the more vulnerable it becomes mm. yeah. of course I, I i i was just looking at in terms of like a short-term intervention um because i as i drove out of my house yesterday i noticed that the, the typical areas along the highway, both the N1 and the N4, mm -hmm. um, where there would have been water sitting on the road. There was no water sitting on the road. But I had noticed earlier on this uh, uh, last week that there were people actively desilting, desilting gutters, yeah. uh, clearing um, silt off the road itself, yeah. the, the, in between the, the concrete mm -hmm. uh, barriers, they're, they're, they're clearing out silt from the road. And talk to us about that as a possible intervention to fix places like Ofanko, for example, yeah. Yeah. in a temporary yeah. you know, manner. You know when water doesn't flow mm. through the channels it has to flow to, it finds a way. So, so what you're saying is perfect. We need to look at how to desilt all our gutters mm. and how to create channels where there are no channels. Mm. In some of these developing areas, when we build, when individuals build, they don't think about providing any yeah. gutters or drains. Yeah. So everybody has built, yeah. and when it rains, the water must find a way. Yep. And usually, the geography of the area is such mm. that the water just moves towards where it can easily go. So yeah. we need to desilt gutters where, where there are gutters. We need to mm. desilt drains where there are drains. And in the new areas where there are no proper drainage systems and everything, people need to get together to start yeah. doing some communal labor. Mm. We Absolutely. need to start doing some communal labor 
to to create channels for water mm. to flow and also to 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 desilt the existing drains and i think that one thing which is really contributing to the flooding is the amount of collection we are seeing over the years look back to 20 years ago when the n1 wasn't as wide yes. right it was just two links here two links here so when it rained the water collected yeah. on a small area but now it's larger so mm. collection is is bigger look back all these areas that we are looking at people have built and tiled all these spaces mm. and hmm. I, I, like i said no water goes Going, down yeah we need to encourage people to have softer compounds grass okay. so that when it rains some water okay and then Super. some a, 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 a small amount will flow yeah. into the drains if we don't do that all the rain that comes from the heavens yeah. ends up in the drains. The drains don't have the capacity to, to carry these, that. No, so we'll flood. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very Pujo. much. Yeah. Pujo well, I mean, there's a topic I'm sure you'll be interested in uh, when we take a short break and come back. We're going to be talking um, about Butri Lagoon in mm. the Ahanta West Municipality. It's a bridge that's uh, deteriorating. It's a 15 year old bridge. It's deteriorating quite badly yeah. and uh, posing danger to the lives of the residents there. We'll be right back. So I'm here at the Butre community located within the Ahanta District of the Western Region. 